Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Nerd to the Third Power, your one-stop shop for all things nerdy and awesome. I'm your host, Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Gonzo. With me, as always, this epic quest of awesomeness is our resident anime gods, the cat. Cat, how are you doing this week? Ooh, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm like, for the first time, like, all year, I'm super excited because it's almost Halloween. <laughs> Yes, yes. You got. Are you? Are you? Uh, are you? Are you giving candy out to trick or treaters this year? I live in an apartment complex, so we do not get trick or treaters. Uh, but we do uh, like decorate your cubicle at work, and kids. Well, the people coworkers will bring in their kids, so we do cubicle trick or treating. And I've got my office all decked out. Like by that day, it'll be decked out like Hogwarts. Ooh! Um, so Take pictures. I'm, I'm really excited. I hope it all looks okay by the end. But I just, I love Halloween. I love that uh, all of the the good um, decor, good expensive decor was on sale and I bought a bunch of it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually going to be giving out candy this year uh, to trick-or-treaters now that I'm actually living uh, in, a, in, a, in a house again. Um, so I got myself, I got myself a big bowl of sweet tarts and mini, mini Tootsie Roll pops. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to, to giving candy up to the trick or treaters, assuming there are any, cause like, I don't know, maybe is, is it just my, is it just me or is, or is there like less actual like trick or treating, uh, going on in the last few years? Cause maybe I just, you just don't live in the right neighborhood. I, I don't know. I, I have no basis of comparison because I've been living in apartments for years now, so we don't get trick or treaters in apartments. Okay. Mike, what about you? How are you doing this week? I'm alive. Isn't that exciting? It's something I'm good. <laughs> it feels like it's been a while since, since I've been on this show, but I know it hasn't. So yeah, I'm actually doing all right. Got good energy. We're talking about Halloween, a favorite holiday for me to put up my fucking Christmas tree. Take that asshole. Um, and I get to talk horror movies. So I'm excited today. <laughs> all right well uh as, as i'm sure you've gathered by uh the, the the energy in the room uh this is our halloween spooktacular episode and this year uh we're discussing supernatural horror ghosts and demons and things that go bump in the night so that's gonna be a lot of fun uh but of course there is prestige to follow so we're gonna begin as always with ask a geek and uh most of our questions here are halloween themed uh but we got one here but we got one here uh for mike um although i'm gonna open this up to myself because it was something i participated in and it's from our frequent offender tyler wheeler and uh he asked whatever happened to last exit to ponyville Uh, um yeah that happened um a collection of things basically because i was running the website almost exclusively by myself um it was just hard to get together co-hosts uh, one of the co-hosts and me uh, had an unfortunate disagreement, and we're not friends anymore, which is just, it's the nature of relationships as you get older. And that's You're talking about your co-host on Twig? Because me and Skyblades were your co-hosts on Ponyville. Oh, no, well, I'm talking pre- oh, well, I'm talking before that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking way, way behind the curtain. No, 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 uh, it just, I didn't have time to keep up with the show. Like, I watch remarkably little TV, actually. Like, if I do, it's rare. I watch maybe three hours a week, and that's almost exclusively on Wednesday nights, and that's about it. So, mm-hmm. now that the series is done, maybe I'll bring it back, but I stopped watching the show back in season three. So, I'm not saying I, I, I'm not saying that I'm opposed to it, because that might be interesting now that the series is over to talk about its legacy. I definitely do a sort of post-modem or modem mortem post-mortem yes that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> uh, fuck well, people. Uh, well it was it was it was it was kind of just a case of bad timing in general because as i said you, me and skyblaze were also working with you on last six to ponyville and at the time that we were doing that i had actually just started going back to school uh for my cybersecurity degree and i was focusing most of my attention on my studies um at the time so it was really hard for me to keep up with the show um, because w- when it was on, I was in one of my classes, um, and it was one of my longer classes. So usually, when I came home that day, I was just like so exhausted, I just went straight to sleep. And then Skyblaze had a bunch of her own shit going on at the time, so it was really just a case of I think just bad timing in general. Yeah, to bring the show back now would be remarkably difficult. I had a hard drive crash last year, and I lost a lot of the Twig elements from about 2010 to 2017. 
So I'm missing all my pre-produced stuff. I've had to reconstruct everything, almost everything. So bringing it back would be difficult. Like I said, not not impossible. Maybe we'll do like a Twig Roundtable someday and we'll talk about the series as it was. We'll talk about the movie, stuff like that. I would be open to doing a commentary on the movie. I actually have the Tales of Equestria role-playing game. Uh, so I wouldn't mind doing a review of that at some point. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then Tyler's also got another question about uh, our thoughts on season nine, but uh, I'm not going to answer that one because I haven't actually seen season nine yet. I have to, I still have to burn my way through season eight. So uh, we're going to put that one on the back burner until we can answer it properly. Uh, and then let's see, next question here. Uh, this one comes from Paul, and uh, it's addressed to all of us. And uh, he's got a question here uh, that uh, it, it just really, it's one that that, that that someone one we've that I know we've answered before. Uh, his question is, I know you've talked in the past about what your least favorite Halloween candy is, but what did you consider your holy grail candy when you were trick-or-treating? So, Kat, let's start with you. What was what was a Halloween candy that you were always uh, excited to get when you were a kid? Um, of course, the holy grail is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Because that was the the, the parent tax. The, the one that mom and dad wanted, so that's how you know it was the best. <laughs> um, but I've always been like any chocolate, really, I was good for just any any Milky Way or Snickers. Um, what I really liked, and this is just a little bit cheesy, um, and it's proof that I'm just a goddamn softy. But I really liked getting uh, sugar daddies because my dad loved sugar daddies. So it was like uh, me sucking up to my dad by giving him a candy that he liked out of my stash. <laughs> okay. Uh, Birdman, what about you? Favorite Halloween candy? Um, not so much a candy as an item that would uh, happen, at least where I, where, where I grew up. When people would give up full-size cans of pop, uh, I'm a soda fiend, or at least I used to be, uh, kind of growing up. Uh, but candy-wise, um, arrows and Kit Kats were pretty big for me. Um, although now, now that I've been exposed to it in the last couple of years paydays oh my god i love paydays Ooh, sweet and salty really so good okay uh for me as a child the the my my favorite halloween candy was always those fruit flavored tootsie rolls that for, that for okay all right yeah, yeah. it's my favorite candy not yours <laughs> But like they came in like they came in like lemon, strawberry, cherry, uh, lime, you know, all all different flavors. The only one I didn't like was vanilla, that because I, I I thought it tasted like glue. Um, yeah. But how for much the long... glue have you eaten? <laughs> you know what? Who the fuck are you to judge me? <laughs> yeah, I, I've probably eaten paste. So why not? For the longest time, they only came out uh, in those variety packs that you get around Halloween. Um, that had like you know maybe like two or three of those flavored tootsie rolls. Uh, alongside a bunch of chocolate stuff. And I, I'll never forget the first time I found that they had started releasing those fruit-flavored Tootsie Rolls uh, in in separate bags of just them, and I bought, like, nine of them and just hoarded them because I was afraid that they were going to go away. <laughs> um, another one that uh, I was always really excited to get uh, was... Do you remember those those giant sweet tarts? The, the, the big, like, disc ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to love those um, because they were actually chewy and didn't have like the texture of chalk like regular sweet tarts did. So uh, that was a, that was the, those were my probably my favorite Halloween candies. Do they even still make those disc sweet tarts anymore? I, I, I haven't think seen they them. Do. I think so. Maybe. I don't think they're in, in Canada, but definitely in the U.S. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen them in years. Okay, and uh, let's see here now. Uh, next question here. Uh, this one comes uh, from Mark, and uh, he asks, "What is a what are some of our favorite Halloween specials, like special Halloween themed TV episodes or, or shorts or something like that?" So, uh, Birdman, let's start with you on this one. What's your, what's your favorite uh, Halloween special? Favorite Halloween special is I'm a big fan of the Community ones uh, that used to be. That was like a sitcom that ran on NBC for a while. But to go even further back, the Roseanne ones were really good. Um, favorite animated, there are two. There's the Grinch Halloween Night one, which is really good, if a little uh, strange. 
uh because there's some really fucked up imagery in that um the other one is i can't remember the name but i know it's hannah barbera leonard nimoy's in it as a voice and i think it's called the halloween tree and it was on cartoon network a lot in the early aughts oh shit uh, i thought i was the only one who remembered the halloween tree i saw it like once in the 90s and then it just disappeared yeah it's just it's really well animated um and it's pretty kick-ass and then um actually uh full disclosure here i've never seen the charlie brown one the great pumpkin one you've never seen it's a great pumpkin charlie brown no surprise that 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 needs to be fixed like immediately That that that's 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 your homework. Watch it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and write me a fifty word essay on it. All right, <laughs> all right, Kat. What about you? Favorite Halloween specials? Um, are we talking about just like like hocus pocus kind of stuff, or are we talking about like here's a TV show and it had a Halloween episode? Because if that's the case, I don't know. There, I feel like a lot of the stuff I watched didn't have Halloween episodes because I watched a lot of anime and that's not really a thing there but um if i had to pick something and i think we've talked about this before but buffy yes buffy had excellent halloween episodes because it's already a really spooky show that has a lot of supernatural stuff in it already and then you add in all of the extra weirdness of the halloween episodes and they were always just so wonderful just delightful episodes because they just get weirder than normal <laughs> okay uh well for me uh it's a great pumpkin charlie brown is always uh is always you know a, a, a tradition uh for me to watch on around halloween uh and then i know that the, the the show in general is just a shadow of what it once was in terms of quality but i'll tell you what I always has a special place in my heart i will always make time to watch the yearly simpsons treehouse of horror specials yeah, because agreed. those have those have always been been really just creative and hilarious, and I always love the the Simpsons Halloween episodes. Um, as far as dedicated Halloween specials, uh, ones that I really remember enjoying uh, from when I was a kid, uh, like you mentioned, the Halloween tree. I saw that once, and then like the thing is, is like like I, I must have been like the only person who saw it because it, I, I it never aired again. Uh, that I saw and no one else I, I talked to ever remembered it. Um, so I thought that it was for three years, I thought it was like so many things in my life, just a hallucination on my part. <laughs> and then uh, let's see, there was one that um, there, there was, there was a, a, a you're just, do you guys remember the Goosebumps TV series? Oh Goose god, yeah, bumps. that was filmed not far from yeah. me, actually. Yeah, um, there was an episode that was actually set uh, during Halloween, um, where uh, these kids were falling around these 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 two tall pumpkin masked figures, um, and they're basically forcing them into like an endless trick or treating uh, loop. Um, and the thing that I remember, uh, the thing I, I the, the one thing I don't like about that episode was the twist ending at the end because you know, Goosebumps always has a twist ending. Where it's revealed that these two uh, these two pumpkin mask figures are friends of a, of a couple of the main kids, and they were playing a prank on the rest of their friends. Uh, but these two these two pumpkin mask figures are actually aliens who eat people, and they're the ones who actually introduced Halloween to uh, to Earth to you know kind of fat, to fatten up their 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 herd, so to speak. So what? Yeah. All right, sure. <laughs> that so. sounds like a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, up, up until the ending, it's a really, it's a really great episode, and I really, I really love that. God, I haven't watched Goosebumps in years. I, yeah, I remember it was running on Discovery Family for a long time, but I never, I never bothered to tune into it. So, I need to kind of pick that up again. All right, and let's see here now. Okay, here's a good one. This is, here's one that I'm kind of looking forward to. This one comes from Sam, and it's a question for all of us. And, uh, he asks, what's the most creative Halloween costume you've ever seen? And I'm I'm gonna open with this one because this is this is something that that I thought was just totally cool. So uh, I think I mentioned on the on the on the show that I used to deliver pizza for Domino's, and I always worked Halloween because you made bang money uh, that night from people ordering pizzas for Halloween parties. I took took a delivery to a house uh, that was hosting a party, and this kid who was like ten years old, remember he was wearing jeans, a blue hoodie, and he had all these "Hello, my name is" uh, 
name t- stickers all over his hoodie. And he walked up to me and uh, he asked me what my name was. And I told him and he wrote it down in one of those stickers and he stuck it on his hoodie. And I was like, what, what the heck are you doing? He said, oh, it's my costume. I'm identity theft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I was like, you win Halloween. You're going to get all the candy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kat? What's the most creative uh, Halloween costume you've ever seen? God, you know, it's really hard to say because I've been around cosplayers for so long. And so my standards are a little bit different um, in terms of costuming. Um, so nothing really stands out to me right now, except um, we have a costume contest at work every year. And uh there was one that won for most creative costume. And I don't know that it was the most creative thing in the world, but, um, but it was really cute. It was um, a husband and a wife that we have at my work had just had a little baby and they came in at, dressed as uh, hockey players because we're like, it's a hockey town here. So they came dressed up like one of them was a goalie. One of them was just another player on the, 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 the blues is our local hockey team. And they dressed their baby daughter up as the Stanley Cup. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's really cute. You know, like the the just being a hockey player, no big deal. But like the fact that um, my coworker had gone out of her way to make like a little Stanley Cup costume for her baby. And we had not won the Stanley Cup yet. This was a few years ago. Oh, maybe it was like a premonition predicting the future that we would win the Stanley Cup. <sighs> You can send that baby to Toronto anytime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I okay. thought that was really cute. Okay, Birdman, what about you? This I saw on Reddit, so I didn't see this with my own eyes, but somebody had a costume where they used LCD screens and a camera, so it looked like there was a hole in their chest, and you could see right through them. I've seen that. That was... That that, that, was... That, yeah, that was sick. That got passed around on Facebook a couple years ago. I remember that. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, that's so creative. And something you wouldn't really think of unless you were a big tech nerd. Uh, to kind of go with Cat Story, I saw a baby costume. This has been passed around for years on Facebook and Twitter. Um, there's a baby dressed as the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And it's standing outside the Ghostbusters firehouse. You see all the toys surrounding it. And it looks like the baby's attacking the Ghostbusters firehouse. Um, that's my friend Dan Milano's kid. Oh, so really? I was, like, I was like, your baby's famous. He's like, I know. Uh, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. He works for Nickelodeon. He's the guy who created Greg the Bunny. He's done stuff for like Robot Chicken. So uh, he's a big dork and a big nerd. So I, I thought that was pretty win too. Okay. Another another creative one I saw. This is one that a coworker of mine uh, trotted out a couple of years ago. He came into to work uh, on a Halloween shift, and he had a, a miniature chalkboard hanging from around his neck, and he'd stuck a blue Twitter logo sticker in the top left corner. And every now and then he'd write, you know, some something like you know Star Wars sucks or you know I hate this or whatever, and he would just kind of. Just randomly changed every few minutes ago and I, I finally I couldn't figure out what he was doing I was like so so what is your costume supposed to be and said oh I'm someone on Twitter who disagrees with you <laughs> <laughs> so anyway but that is all the ask key questions that we have for this week thank you as always for sending them and as always you can send them to us through the email at drgonzo at nerd to the third power dot com we love getting your questions love reading them on the air so get your questions in you just might get your question read And so with that, we're going to jump right into our discussion topic, which this year for Halloween, we're discussing supernatural horror, Uh, ghosts and demons and things that go bump in the night and, uh, you know, how how that terrifies us and why. And uh, so, yeah, let's just kind of just get right into it. So, uh, Kat, let's start with you on this one, because I know that there's a uh, there's 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 a particular bit about this that uh, had you kind of just up up on the ceiling uh, when you went to see it the first time. Ooh, what are we talking about? A, a paranormal talking- activity. Paranormal activity, yes. I was like, which which one? Which one? Um, so, in terms I think, of Because I figured we trotted out the, 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 the koala story enough. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes, we have trotted out the koala story enough. Um, I, I, in terms of horror, I don't usually enjoy, like, the monster films or the, like, 
the the gore horror gore whatever you call it torture porn uh kinds of horror i don't like masked killers or any of that that shit doesn't interest me i really like a slow burn paranormal horror film um some spooky ghost haunting a place and then bam at the end that's the kind of horror i enjoy um and when paranormal activity came out i did go see it in theater it did scare the shit out of me like you knew it wasn't real um and mostly I was nauseous the whole time because shaky cam makes me so sick. But I didn't sleep that night either. So, um, but that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. Not necessarily the found footage thing, but just like the slow burn. The the slowly introducing the paranormal elements and then the audience knows, but the the cast doesn't. And I find that stuff more entertaining. I like that, the creeping aspect of it. Um, so one of my favorite horror movies, um, oh my God, I just blanked on the name of it. Hold on. The Conjuring. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I found it. Uh, one of my favorite horror movies that's come out recently has been The Conjuring, which they made way too many spinoffs of, and I don't care about any of the sequels or spinoffs, just that first one. Partially because it's supposed to be based on a true story that you know brings in an element of, ooh, this really happened in quotation marks, of course, but mostly just the, the way that that film was set up, that you know it's going to be haunting, you see the little things, and you see how those little things are being ignored and, and passed off as something totally innocent or normal, and then you watch it build into something hor- horrible. And that, to me, is just really good entertainment. Okay. Birdman, what about you? Some of your, some of your favorite uh, paranormal horror stories. I'm going to go with, like, Kat here. I, I'm a big fan of the James Wan uh, Conjuring movies, especially the first two, uh, because they do a great job with atmospheres, and them being based on the real-life experiences of Ed and Lorraine Warren, uh, para- paranormal uh, investigators. Uh, one based on the Amityville house, another one based on the Shetfield, England uh, haunting. Um, I thought they were remarkably well done because they didn't give you a monster. You only saw things very briefly. A lot of it was left up to the imagination, a lot of tension building, a lot of atmosphere, a lot of you don't necessarily know where the scare is going to come from. And the pro- and the problem with that franchise is it became that, a franchise. The Conjuring, I hate this phrase, the Conjuring universe opened up when they introduced Annabelle. And Annabelle in the first movie was, hey, here's a creepy doll, it's a haunted object, don't fucking touch it. Um, And it was left more or less as, here's a plot device we may or may not use, but it's meant to be, ooh, spooky and shit. Um, Annabelle, uh, the first one, is boring as shit, nothing happens. Um, Annabelle creation is hilarious because Annabelle actually kills people. And Annabelle Comes Home is the best of the spinoffs, and that's not a bar that's set particularly high. The Nun, um, spooky atmosphere, but does nothing. Curse of Ill Aurora, holy shit. Um, just avoid it. But to talk about the stuff that I do like. Um, there's a movie, it's, an, it's, it's about a haunted house, and it's, it's a weird one. I think it features the guy from The Greatest American Hero um, and Norm from Cheers. Uh, it's a movie called House. It got a release from Arrow Video this, this summer or the summer before last. Um, it's about a guy writing about his experiences in Vietnam, and his mother died in this house. And it's just about all the weird shit that happens over the course of this movie. And his son goes missing at one point in the movie. It's weird, but it's surprisingly fun. Um, Another movie that I really like, and this one should probably come as no surprise, is the Toby Hooper movie produced by Steven Spielberg, uh, Poltergeist. A classic. And it kind of made horror accessible to the masses. It wasn't Wes Craven's... uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street, nor was it Sean Cunningham's Friday the 13th. It wasn't a slasher, and it wasn't something like a slow burn, like Cat likes uh, spooky movies. It wasn't like The Changeling or The Entity or even another lesser-known horror, horror, horror movie called Ghost Story, which, if you can track down, is really good. It's slow, but it's really decent. Um, 
And yeah, Poltergeist I liked because it kind of gave that Hollywood shine to horror. We're showing that you could do something scary without showing blood and gore. You could show a monster without going over the top Tom Savini special effects. Stuff like that. That movie Um, haunts me to this day. No shit. I saw that movie when I was probably way too young. And the, the visuals of it... And and a lot of the content of it have just messed me up for my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, horror is one of those French or horror is one of those genres that I'm a huge fan of. I mean, one of the things we did recently on Twig is I spoke with a director. Uh, you you may have heard of this. There's a documentary called In Search of Darkness, which looks at the '80s as. Um, a very big prime time in horror because a lot of directors would take um, risks with things. you got the creature features, the slashers, the gore stuff, but not like hostile where it was torture porn for the sake of the suffering. It wasn't the creative kills of Tom Savini or Tom Woodruff or Rick Baker's creative um, makeup effects, nor would you get people coming up to the industry like Greg uh, Nicotaro, stuff like that. Um, And it was kind of cool just seeing the different horror movies that existed uh, in the 80s and kind of getting a view of a view through it. Um, Another movie that I like, it's kind of it's about a haunted house, but it kind of has a creature in it. In essence, it's about killer dolls, but the house is possessed that makes the dolls come alive. It's a, I think the movie came out in 86. It's done by Stuart Gordon. It's called Dolls, the same guy who did uh, Reanimator, which if you've seen that movie, boy, were you in for a treat. Um, it's weird, but it's really good, and it's lesser known. It got a release from Shout Factory under their Scream Factory label a couple of years ago. Um, I don't think of what else I can talk to you about. I'm actually just looking through the movies I have downloaded on my computer or have on my horror movie shelf right now that I can really uh, kind of talk about because I get where cats coming from because certain horror movies, they kind of reduce the scares to where's the knifed maniac going to come from next. And that's not always the best way to do a scare. The best way, in my opinion, is to build it up over a while to let tension build, to let the atmosphere bring, bring music and sound design creative shots let things come to a slow boil until it's eventually too late and something comes out and gets you and you have no chance to escape that's the type of scares that i love i haven't been scared by a horror movie since uh, it's a more recent title but it chapter two i saw that in theaters uh two months ago or last month or whatever um, yeah, that actually legitimately had me scared of one, but I actually got a good jump out of it at at, at one point because it was masterfully done. Um, yeah, so Billy, why don't you pick up the ball here and then I'll pick up wherever you want me to go next. Well, um, uh, the uh, horror movies in general, I think I mentioned this on the, on, the, on, the, on the show many times, horror movies in general don't tend to do it for me. Um, the only one that is consistently scary to me, even to this day, uh, is my, my favorite horror movie, the original Alien, but that's not germane to this conversation. Horror video games, on the other hand, um, have really done a lot in the last uh, 20 years or so to really explore supernatural horror. And actually, uh, two of uh, my favorite horror games ever actually deal with supernatural horror. And those are uh, Fatal Frame 2, Crimson Butterfly, and Silent Hill 2. And Fatal Frame 2... Uh, I think I mentioned out this also on the show. It's one of the games in my collection that I've never been able to finish just because it freaks me out so much. Uh, so for those who don't who aren't familiar with uh, the Fatal Frame series, it's a series of Japanese uh, horror games, uh, which that alone should tell you how fucked up things are because Japanese horror in general is just totally fucked up. This is it's like it's it, this is it's just I don't know what what's going on over there, but like every every time someone recommends something to me that's that's from Japan and isn't the horror genre, I'm like, nope, nope, I I need to be able to sleep for the next six years. <laughs> um, but it deals with this it, this village, uh, that it, this remote Japanese village that's uh, haunted by by ghosts, and your only defense against these these hostile spirits is this camera that you have to go into first person view. 
and let these spirits get as close as possible for snapping their picture. And it's filled with all the 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 Hallmark Japanese horror tropes, you know, the 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 creepy ass music, the the weird ass uh bodily contortions and just it's it's imagine basically playing through uh through a video game where every enemy is Samara from the ring and you'll have Fatal Frame too. And it's just it's it's, it's one of those it's one of the few horror games I played that I've never been able to finish just because it freaks me out so badly. Um, and Silent Hill 2 I really enjoyed because uh, much like uh, Birdman and Cat uh, I, like the, I like the horror that uh, is kind of slow building but I also like the kind of horror where the more you think about it the more terrifying it becomes um, and Silent Hill 2 does that really well particularly in one section of the game where you're in the Silent Hill Historical Society um, which if you want a breakdown of, of why that's such an effective segment of the game, there's a YouTube channel called Stop Skeletons from Fighting, and they did a breakdown of that segment of the game that uh, if you want a master class on how to do video game horror, that right there is required viewing. But one of the points that they don't touch on in that video, and something that just kind of occurred to me as I was, it was, as I was playing through Silent Hill 2 the last time was, you enter the historical society, it's just this little building on the street, and you just, you just enter through the front door. And then for the rest of the time you're in this segment of the game, you're moving downwards. You're either going downstairs or climbing down ladders or jumping down holes. And you, you just keep going further and further underground. I think somebody finally calculated the, the final distance underground that you go, and it came out to like half a mile or something. And then when you finally exit the historical society, you're back on ground level outside of this little tiny building. But at no point have you ever ever made any upward movement you've just been going down the whole time and yet somehow you're back on ground level so you just somehow warped from a half mile underground to being back on on ground level and just that when that occurred to me i was just like wow this is this is you know this that just adds the creep the creepiness factor even more to this segment of the game just this just the fact that it's it, it, just that reality warping and I absolutely love that kind of horror where the more you think about it, the more disturbing it becomes. And Silent Hill 2 does that really well. So I guess now the question uh, that I want to ask is, what is it about the the supernatural horror that kind of fascinates us and why we're sort of drawn to it? So uh, Kat, let's, uh, let's start with you. What, what is it about, about supernatural horror that really kind of, kind of grabs your attention? Um, I, don't, I don't know why I enjoy it more than other forms of horror, but I think it's probably to do with the fact that it is so difficult to quantify. Um, you know, when when I think about other horror things that we've talked about, like werewolves or vampires, we get them from literature or from movies, and we have rules, and we know how to deal with these entities because we have rules or... Um, like if there's a, a, a masked killer kind of thing, we we know that that's a person. And, you know, even if we're scared, you know, we realize that's just a person. That's a crazy person. He's a bad person. But with like supernatural horror, when you get into demons and, and poltergeists and ghosts and stuff, we are getting into a realm that we only pretend that we really understand or know how to deal with. There is... It's, it's such a malleable um, form of horror because you can do anything. I mean, you could do anything. Every different culture's form of, of horror based around ghosts and, and spirits is everybody's is different. And, and there's no like one solution for it. There's no silver bullet or stick through the heart or whatever for a solution. Um, and it's also something that... Um, I think it's easier to believe and disbelieve at the same time. There's so many people in the world who do believe in ghosts. We don't believe in werewolves. We don't believe in the paranormal. Like We don't believe in vampires and stuff like that. But we believe in ghosts, generally speaking, as a society. We believe in that. We might even believe in demons. And a lot of the... Uh, the basis for our beliefs in these things is rooted in religion and a lot of the world is religious. So these things come, I think a little more naturally to us, but it makes it feel even more difficult to grasp. If that makes so, any sense at so, all. So it's sort of the ultimate unknown, I guess. Yeah. it It's like, 
we don't do a lot of movies about deep sea creatures because we don't actually know shit about deep sea creatures. The bottom of the ocean is probably the most terrifying place on the planet. But for lack of that, we'll take ghosts because that's still easier to deal with. But yeah, it's 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 an unknown because we don't know what happens. We don't really know what happens after we die. We have an idea of what happens after we die. Or we think hell or heaven might exist or might not exist. But we don't know. We can't quantify it. We can't calculate it. It's something that science cannot deal with. Um, and so, so it's just something that we th- we're we like on the edge of it at all times. It's just something that it's like just out of our reach. And, and it's kind of like it could. And that's one of those things. That it could happen to anybody at any time. Death is universal and, and almost everybody has a a culture that involves ghosts and spirits and stuff. And um, they're so prevalent in in our own history. Like, of course, werewolves and vampires and and serial killers and stuff have always existed. Um, Pretty much for as long as most cultures give a shit. But, um, like, the, um, the lengths that we have gone to to prove that they do or don't exist... Like, it doesn't take much to disprove vampires, but there's, like, ghost hunting shows to try and prove that ghosts exist. Um, And then when you think back to, like, um, I guess it was the 1800s when the Fox sisters were big and mesmerism was huge and people were looking for a way to talk to spirits and harness the power of spirits and stuff like that. I mean, like, we have gone to such lengths to understand it and we're nowhere we're nowhere closer to it than we were hundreds of years ago sorry i put myself on mute all right (laughs) all right birdman what about you what what is it about supernatural horror that, that draws your attention the thing that draws me to supernatural horror is i'm chasing experiences i've already had I've seen and experienced paranormal activities both as a child, as an adult, and as a professional. What do I mean by that? As a kid, I've seen some things that scared the shit out of me. As an adult, I chased at it with equipment, um, with cameras, with microphones, with uh, with, uh, audio types of stuff. As a professional, I've looked at it using my uh, college education in video and audio, and there are things I cannot explain uh, through science and otherwise. And the reason I like that particular genre of movies is I want to relive that. I want to know what I experienced happened to me. I want to have, I want to be able to grasp that fear. Not much scares me in life. Even when I was on the operating table, when I lost my leg two years ago, I could have died. That didn't scare me. I was prepared to die. But when I saw my first ghost, when I was probably about 10, my fucking heart stopped. My blood ran absolutely cold. And I've never ran so fast in my life. And then I shared that experience moments later with about five or six other people in the room as we watched a ghost walk across... Um, a living room and made audible sounds I hid behind the couch actually would you like me to tell the story in full uh yeah sure go ahead okay so my uncle um he had a wife uh previously and she unfortunately passed away she died in the house that my uncle was still living in so it's the night before my uncle's wedding to his new wife His wife's been gone maybe a year or two. So I'm downstairs playing Nintendo. It's, I remember this. It was early evening at, at, at at the latest. So it's not dark at all. So I'm playing Nintendo. I decide I want to go upstairs and get a, get a drink or something to eat. And my uncle has these stairs. So I stop as I'm going up the stairs and I just feel a presence in the room. I'm the only one downstairs. I turn around. And I can see this black mist pooling in the middle of the floor, like an unnatural just form of black mist. And it forms into the shape of a person. I look at it. 
I don't scream. I run. So I run upstairs. I run through the kitchen, run into the dining room and into the living room. My mom or my grandmother's there. Uh, my aunt Jackie, who was my uncle's new wife to be, um, some other cousins, and I think my uncle himself. So I hide behind the couch, and I'm like, Grandma, Mom, something's coming. She's like, what are you talking about? Mike? like, what? And we, my aunt, the one who passed away, used to wear these heavy wooden shoes, like how you'd see nurses wear. And the dining room was hardwood floor. And after I came out of the dining room, I hid behind the couch, as I said. There's another set of footsteps walking through the kitchen. We are Everybody in that house is in that room at that moment. So we hear the steps walking across the dining room floor. And all of us turn our heads and see this black shape with a veil across their face. It's clearly a woman's shape. It looks like my Aunt Mary. Walks down the hallway... Goes down the hallway, turns left into the bathroom where she had the heart attack. And then goes into the bedroom where she then later passed away. My grandmother gets up, stands up, and goes, Mary? And as soon as she says that, the the black spirit or whatever it was disappears. And all of us look at each other. We're quiet for about a minute. And my, gr- and my grandmother goes, you all saw that, right? We all just kind of nod our heads. And nobody spoke about it. But we saw that on the night before my uncle was to get married again. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of I'm actually kind of shaking. So either my blood sugar is low or I scared the shit out of myself. Well, eat some uh, Halloween candy and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I can think of another story, too, and this may be in the same vein of Supernatural. Uh, this is a story I posted on Facebook a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm maybe uh, 19 at the time. My girlfriend is 16. She has a car. We're driving around, and I live near a place called Owen Sound, and there's a place called Irish Block, which is on the back concession. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's nowhere country. Just backwoods and back roads, very isolated, very alone. So late one night, we decide, hey, why don't we go out for a drive? Let's go out to Irish Block. I hear it's haunted. I hear it's something strange is back there. So we go back, and we've got the windows down. It's a, it's a nice summer night. It's a warm night. But we're driving back there. And as we start twisting back to the back roads, it's almost as if the darkness itself is getting more and more intense, surrounding the car, as if it was almost given form. And we start to hear something in the woods. We're not quite sure what it is. Like, the radio's off. All we can hear is the engine and the car on the road. But something's back there. We start hearing something rushing through the woods, as if something's running at us. And we start driving, and whatever it is, it's keeping pace with us. So we're twisting and turning. We don't know where we are. We don't know where where we are fucking going. And I look at her, and I'm like, Ashley, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here fucking now. And she's driving. She's like, Michael, I'm trying. I'm trying. So eventually, we, we just hear this unnatural howl. It wasn't human. It wasn't animal. I don't know what it was. I can't tell you what it was, but I'll tell you this. We got to the edge of the concession, the edge of, of, of the bush, and we got out, and there's a lone light, like a traffic light or something, and we get to it, and whatever it was just stops following us. And then the skies and the darkness just seems normal. It's another warm summer night. But we never went back after that. Something wanted us out of there. I can't tell you what it was. But I'll tell you, it wasn't fucking human. And it never was. So that's my experience. 
Okay. That, All right. That reminds me of a lot of stories because I like to do this to myself. I like to read scary supernatural stories. Um, and if you've ever read about like Wendigos, like yeah. any Native American stories about Wendigos and like people who have seen things, that shit will keep you up for weeks. <laughs> That's what your story reminded me of is some of those kinds of stories. Well, that's what somebody said on my Facebook. They're like, that sounds like a Wendigo. And I thought I was alone in this experience. But then another person that I grew up with said, yeah, my car broke down back there one night during the winter when I when she was younger. And she's like, yeah, I heard something, too. God. So mm. I, I feel a little bit vindicated that I wasn't alone. <laughs> Well, did I, ever, did I ever tell you about the uh, the time me and a group of friends broke into and spent the night in a, uh, an, a an abandoned asylum? God, why would you do that? But no, please go ahead. Yes, please share. <laughs> okay, so uh, this was back in, I want to say, 2006. Uh, so I'd been out of high school for a couple of years. And uh, me and a group of friends, uh, one of the, one of my friends was real big into like you know haunted places and and you know the paranormal and all that weird ass crazy shit. And he found this uh, condemned as, uh, asylum out in Western Maryland. And so uh, he got me and a group of our friends to go out there, and uh, we broke into we broke into the the, whole, the place was condemned. Um, it was it was actually getting ready to be torn down. So that's why we 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 decided to go out there because we wanted to just kind of just give it one last kind of kind of haunting through before it got tore down and replaced with like, I don't know, an apartment complex or something. I, I don't fucking remember. Um, so we broke in and we spent the, uh, we, we, we bunkered down and, and made camp in uh, what we thought was the cafeteria. And just the whole night, you know, it, it, was, it was, God, it was, it was like, it was, it was like, this couldn't have been any more of the stereotypical, uh, you know, haunted hospital. Like there were, you know, rotted away wheelchairs and rusty hospital beds still, you know, kind of overturned in, in, in the occasional room. And it was just, oh, God, it was like something out of, out of like Silent Hill or Resident Evil or something. And the whole night that we're in there. Now, full disclosure, at the time that we did this, um, I think I mentioned this on the show before, but I have occasional bouts of insomnia. I'll go for like, you know, a few, a few days where I just won't sleep. And I was kind of in the middle of one of these bouts. So I don't know how much of this was actually happening, how much it was just my sleep deprived brain playing tricks on me. Um, but throughout, well, tonight I could swear that I would hear like footsteps or something banging, um, you know, in the, on the, from the floor above us or down the hall. Uh, or occasionally I'd hear like some kind of, you know, hear like a voice or something, somebody whispering. Um, that last one I chalked up just, you know, Charlie being a dick because that's the kind of guy Charlie was. Um, you know, but I would hear just these weird noises that I just could not account for. And, uh, you know, finally about like three o'clock or so, you know, every, we were all like, okay, you know, let's just kind of just get some sleep and, you know, we'll be out here in the morning. But again, insomnia, couldn't sleep. And I'm, so I'm, I'm sitting up in my sleeping bag. And I'm looking down the hallway, and I see this this you know it it, it was just it was just an empty hallway, and I turned away from it to kind of you know check the check the time on my uh, on my cell phone, and then when I look back the hallway, there's this humanoid figure that wasn't there before, and it's just standing there, and it was it was it was it was all in silhouette. Its back was there it, it, it was a window at the end of the hallway, and its back was to the window. So the 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 light from you know the moon was kind of just was was to its back. So I couldn't make out you know the figure. Which I just saw this humanoid silhouette, um, but it looked like it was wearing a, a gown, like it looked like it was wearing like a hospital gown, um, based on the on the silhouette. And I just fucking lost i'm like guys guys we gotta get out of here now we gotta go and they're, they're like no god, god gonzo what's going on what, 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 what's again guys i saw something there, there's somebody here with us and they were they were looking down the they I, I pointed down the hallway and the figure wasn't there anymore and they were like you know like dude you you've, you've gone nuts you're seeing stuff and like, no, we, we gotta get out of here if we don't get out of here now we're we're not gonna live to see daylight uh so we were just so it finally, uh, you know, Rick, the guy who was running the expedition, he was like, "Okay, look, you know, he's he's right. We do kind of have to get out of here because what the, what he probably saw was a it was a police officer patrolling the grounds, making sure that there's nobody nobody in here. So yeah, we should probably go if so that we don't like get fucking arrested." 
And even though I, I kept on, you know, it, 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 it didn't look like a cop. It looked like somebody, it looked like a patient. Um, so we, you know, we, we packed up our stuff and we, we, you know, got the hell out of there. And then a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, we were, I was talking with Rick and we were just kind of chilling out and this, this topic of conversation turned to, uh, the, to that, uh, that old asylum. And he was like, yeah, I, I did some you know, research in that place after we left. And uh, it turned out that there was actually uh, more than a few lawsuits leveled against the place for uh, uh, patient abuse and, and patients dying due to neglect or abuse at that place. So, you know, who knows? You, you, you might have seen a vengeful spirit wondering uh, why these college kids were disturbing its rest. And I was like, I, I, I really could have lived quite happily not hearing that. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's that's the closest I've come to an actual paranormal experience. Um, so yeah, what about you, Kat? You uh, you 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 have any uh, any encounters with anything that goes bump in the night? Well, I will spare you the story of the the very last and yeah, permanently last time I ever used a Ouija board. Don't do that, kids. Um, oh, now I'm curious. See, yeah, see now that you no. you can't just drop that on us and then leave us hanging. You got to tell us. <laughs> no, I really don't. I'm not going to talk. about um, I'll say, but, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, I'll say this when it comes to Ouija boards. I've always been told by any of my friends who consider themselves psychic or mediums, don't do it. And the piece yeah. of advice I've always been told is don't call up what you can't put down. Yeah, that was um, very much the experience. So don't do Ouija boards or drugs. Don't do Ouija boards. <laughs> um but uh, I will say, I have a friend who um, I'm, I'm very good friends with, and um, she was prob- she's probably personally very, very haunted. Um, and she told us one time about all the night terrors that she gets, and it's always the same thing, so you could chalk it up to just being night terrors. Um, but I was over at her house one time, and she, you know, we were just hanging out. And we were in the basement of, of her, her house, just chilling, hanging out, watching some anime. And I kept looking out of the corner of my eye because I kept thinking that I saw something. And it was just like, there was just like a shadow in the corner of my eye, just like a small little something always at the corner of my eye. And I'm doing this for like an hour thinking that she, like she's got a cat over there or something and there's nothing. There's nothing over there. And finally, my friend sees me and is like, what's up? And I was like, oh, nothing. I just, I thought I saw something. And she's like, oh, don't worry about that one. And I was like, that one? (laughs) Meaning there's more than one and I should worry about one of them, but not this one. (laughs) Like, I was goddamn unnerved. Uh, Pardon me. I have questions. (laughs) <laughs> Many questions, all of the questions, so, urgent I questions. Have several questions about the building I am currently in and why I should not worry about that one. It was like the di- like telling the story is really funny, and I wasn't like scared at the time or anything, but it occurs to me that that's a really goddamn weird situation to be in. It's just you know, don't worry about that one. <laughs> um, and she's got a million stories, and I really don't um, have anything substantial to recall. You know, um, you know what? You know what? No, fuck it. I, um, I'm, I don't want to say my old house was haunted, but my parents would constantly come to me and say, "You left your radio on," and I never left my radio on. Like my electronics in my bedroom turned themselves on all the goddamn time. And it wasn't like a like a surge protector needed something like that. No, it was like I had this old alarm clock that was a radio alarm clock, and you had to like really move the buttons in order to get it to flip from alarm to radio to whatever. Like the the button was like kind of hard and got stuck a lot, and there was just no way that this thing was moving and turning itself on and off. But I was very good about my alarm because. I- my alarm and I didn't want to ever hear it so it's not like I was just and it was a shitty like a shitty radio so it's not something I'd listen to the radio on I had a stereo for that so the fact that it kept turning itself on was so weird to me and I would get in trouble (laughs) which is kind of a pisser but like 
that and it was especially like the like the last few years that I lived in that house. And as far as I know, nothing weird ever happened in that house. But it was like the last year or two that I lived there that happened more and more frequently, probably in conjunction with the use of a Ouija board in the in the place. So don't do that. <laughs> I had, a, I had an experience like with my Xbox One one time. It just flipped on by itself, and I got kind of flipped out. But no, it turns, just turns out it was downloading an update. <laughs> no. See, so, isn't and... that weird? <laughs> but it's, it's crazy how each one of us, there are three of us here, and each one of us has experienced something that we cannot explain. Well, I mean, in, in fairness, I may have just been hallucinating, because I, I, I have actually gotten to the point in my insomnia bouts where I actually your, your your brain actually does start to hallucinate. Ask me some time to tell you about uh, the time in high school that uh, I had a a, a salamander, a sombrero wearing salamander named Sergey, who uh, would extol me the virtues of Marxist communism. Well, that does sound like something for another episode. <laughs> yep. Um, and, and, and you get insomnia. I get um, exploding head syndrome. If you've never heard of that, it's not as bad as it sounds. But it does cause you to hear sounds that aren't there, like as you're falling asleep. So it could be like the sound of a freight train coming through your place. Like I hear weird noises all the time and I realize it's because of exploding head syndrome. But like, man, do I hear some weird shit sometimes. You want to know what the most common form of that is? Hearing someone calling your name when no one is actually doing so. Oh, that's too fucking freaky. I've never heard anybody talk to me, I think. I've had that happen. Actually, uh, last year, um, I just got released from the hospital. Um, I was in rehab hospital in for most of January, then I got released. I'd come home, my, my, my uh, real mother had died, my real mom, Kim, had died uh, while I was in hospital. Um, so I'd come home and Blair, my wife, is at work. Nobody's in in the apartment. And I, I'm very clear-headed. It's the middle of the day. I've just finished doing something on, on the computer. Ordinary circumstance. Clear as day. My mother's voice from down the hallway. Michael? And that's the only time I've ever heard heard that was my mom's voice after she passed away. Oh, fuck that. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I've got tons of stories. Some that will probably unnerve you, but that's for next year. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I still kind of want to hear a cat's Ouija board story. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to relive that. I really don't. Um, but I, I just think it's really interesting. The reason why I like the the paranormal stories more so than other forms of horror is because everyone has one. We all have a a, a story that happened to us that we're pretty sure happened but logically makes no sense scientifically makes no sense um and and we can't explain it and and if three out of three of us have a story god knows if you go and talk to like say 10 of your co-workers how many of them are going to have some sort of story they can't explain you know can can, can, can you know you, you know who i want to know uh, if if they have any really good stories skyblaze i bet because uh, she lives in the old country i'm sure she's had more than a few <laughs> I'm sure half of her swords are haunted. <laughs> uh, so yes, but uh, that's uh, we're running a bit long here, so we got to kind of start uh, we can start wrapping things up. So uh, I think we've uh, we've actually we we like like this kind of took a weird turn. We uh, started talking about yeah, horror movies that we like. Now we're just talking about paranormal experiences that we've had. So let's open it up to you, the listeners. What's a uh, What's an encounter you've had with something that goes bump in the night, or what's a supernatural horror film or story that you really enjoy? Uh, you know what? Just go ahead and drop in the comments. You know, tell tell us a ghost story. Tell us your ghost story. What is a what is what is an encounter that you've had, or just a story that you really enjoy telling? Should, so uh, should yeah, we, should we read some people's stories? I would like uh, to. Okay, yeah. Drop 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 a drop drop a ghost drop your ghost story in the comments or uh, send it to send it to us through the email. Same same address. The Ask a Geek Dr Gonzo at Nerd of the Third Power dot com. And uh, if we get some good ones, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll read them on the air. Read them on the show. Uh-huh. That would be so cool. If you send it to us, please let us know that you're consenting to have it read on the podcast so that we know if it's okay. <laughs> Names have been changed to protect the innocent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. But uh, yeah, so tell us your ghost stories. And uh, so with that, that is all the time we have for Nerd of the Third Power this week. Thank you, Azar, for tuning in. Happy Halloween. 
Uh, we will see you guys uh, in a couple weeks. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Dr. Gonzo. I'm the cat. I'm putting up my Christmas tree. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Taka, play us out. I'm putting up my Christmas tree.